topic for today is how to choose a new horn. And where better to choose a new horn than here at what is for many the mecca of horn playing, Alexander's in Mainz. Let's go upstairs and see what they've got. I'm here in the famous testing room at Alexander's with Hans Hermann, the head of sales. We've known each other for many years and he's had to listen to me try out quite a few horns. Hans, do you remember? Yes, I do. <laughs> really. <laughs> the amazing thing about this was that I, when, when, you, when you try out a horn here, Hans will sit there and listen very quietly and he, he'll say, mm, 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 and you know immediately what, whether he thinks the sound is good or not. Yes, just a yes or no. Yes, but, but you seem to know. How do you know? How do you... How can you hear when someone's on the right track when they're testing a horn? Mm, I listen at the intonation, I look at the player as well, and uh, I think, and I'm very sure, um, that you hear if somebody feels good with an instrument. So what would you say are the most important things to watch out for? Because um, many of us, we come into a room like this, we see all these amazing horns, it's like being in a candy shop, mm -hmm. um, and you want to try all of them out, but we want that ultimate horn. What would you advise um, all of us to watch out for while we're trying out a horn? Yeah, first of all, uh, don't be afraid to see so many instruments in one It's a pleasure. In one <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's nice, and uh, a lot of players are surprised to find a lot of instruments here. But if we uh, select, then we look at the instruments we need, because there are different designs, there are different models, uh, we have different finishes. So usually the player gets five, six instruments to select. And is, it, is it better to really just judge from five instruments, that less is more? Mm, less sometimes is better than more. Okay, yeah. it's less confusing. Yes, <laughs> sometimes the players are very confused that they have too much instruments. Okay, so you would, you would lay out five instruments, someone would come in here, mm -hmm. like I'm doing today, um, and you, you've chosen, even though I would like to try all of them, you've chosen just a few for me to try out here. Yes. And um, I remember when, when we tried, I've owned three Alexanders in my time, and um, you've helped me choose two of those. Mm -hmm. And I really think it was the, the feeling, the very first feeling I had playing these instruments that, that was the right one. I sort of felt, aha, this one really fits to me. Is, that's in your experience that people know straight away? That's a very important point. To, to follow your first feeling. I compare it sometimes like buying shoes. If you slip in <laughs> and you get pressure. A man talking about buying shoes, I'm impressed. <laughs> you will, don't buy them. <laughs> I thought that was our job. <laughs> but, uh, the first feeling must be really good. And uh, after this uh, first test of several instruments, you have to put the instruments by side which don't fit. And the one you have a good feeling, they get in the last selection. And then we start to continue a test which is more uh, intensive. Okay, so you would recommend um, going with your feeling, the very first feeling, mm -hmm. when we get the horn to try out, which I'm going to try out in a minute. Um, do you, I've heard people do the most amazing things at horn exhibitions. They pick up the new horns, they play Strauss 1, they play all the high notes they can possibly play. Um, uh, would, you, would you recommend playing a piece you know, or would you recommend trying out specific notes? Uh, it depends. It's funny on an exhibition. Sometimes you find competitions who are playing better high notes. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, trumpet players are very well doing this. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, there are some Mozart, some Strauss pieces which the people try, and, and you hear them every day. And uh, you listen sometimes when the door is closed, and you find a beep. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then they take another instrument, and you listen. Some notes are very well. Are horns, are your horns like wine? Are there good years and bad years? Mm, no, because the sun is Polit not <laughs> politically correct not answer. <laughs> the okay, the but I found that the horns do differ. I mean, they're all hand handmade, so obviously each one has its own special character. Yes, that's right. The, the character is uh, the main thing which is different. Um, but not the quality. I think at these days we have a way of production where the um, quality limit of the instrument is very high. In old days, um, maybe we made 10 instruments and 8 were normal, standard. One instrument was very good and one was not good. 
But that doesn't happen these, anymore. Oh, these days we don't. Of have course, this. it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. I've tried out a lot of ones in the last few years, and and really, I must say, they've all been pretty good. It was hard to find the one that I wanted. Um, but I must say the, the, the my very last one, the hand hammered one, mm -hmm. that made a big difference. Can you just tell us a little bit about this hand hammered business? I remember very well this visit in, in Berlin and uh, I remember that they put the instrument on the stage and nobody did know about the hand hammer. That's and, right. Uh, you started, Stefan started, you started, Fergus uh, played some instruments and uh, I listened to, to this and, and I felt that uh, this instrument had a very different character. The carrying power. Yeah, yeah. The, the carrying power and uh, by the stage in Berlin and the way how you play, it fits very good, the hand hammer design. But why? The tension of the bell is different. We have uh, the system that the, the bell is made in the normal way. It's a standard banding and we have the origin ball. And then we refill the bell. And then one of our handsman makers has uh, the work to hammer this iron. It's very dear, the huge hammer, and he's hammering all the day. <laughs> we, we've been <laughs> on, this, on this bell to get a higher tension in the material. That's the way. We've been calling these hands instead of handgehämmert in German. We're calling them handsgehämmert. That's, that's, that's what we've been calling them. But it's true, these, these hand-hammered bells have made a lot of difference to, to our way of playing in the Brother and Phil anyway. The other thing um, I wanted to ask about was the, um, the, the screw bell. Mm -hmm. um, I play, I'm still one of these really old-fashioned people, I play on a, on, a, on a, what do you call it in English? Bell. A fixed bell. Fixed bell. Um, what, what, do you recommend uh, one thing for one person, one thing for the other, or...? or no. No. Uh, things has changed completely. In old days we had maybe 50-50, fixed bell or detachable bell, and in these days people travel more and more. And in the plane you have almost problem to get a fixed bell I still case do. <laughs> into the cabin. <laughs> and uh, uh, therefore the gig bags, for example, are much more comfortable and you don't have problem to get in the airplane. What about the sound? And that's of the one horn. reason. Yeah. Uh, but the main reason in these days is that uh, the sound is uh, more compact, um, it's more strong, it's not too brassy, too early, and the uh, players in, in these days now have more power. In, in old times the teaching was different and players don't have so much uh, power in the ombudsman, yeah. so that the ring doesn't matter. In old days sometimes the players said, oh the ring it's more weight, it's 125 grams more. And it's too strange, so it takes me power, I'm getting tired early, and we don't have this problem in these days now. Maybe I should think about changing. Hmm. Mm, your colleagues told you several they times. They tell me several <laughs> times, I know, but I still stay on my fixed bell, I still love it. Okay, well what do you think, should we try out a few horns? Yes, yes. Great. let's start. Okay. Can we organize some? Yes. Which ones? Let me show the first selection we make for you. Let me get my mouthpiece. Without a mouthpiece, nothing is possible. Please. Okay, what is this? That's a hand hammered 103, as we talked about. And we have a couple of those, so uh, six to eight instruments. We All unlacquered. All unlacquered in raw condition. So uh, it helps that uh, you have uh, possibilities to, to get a different design. So some players don't want lacquer. Some players want lacquer, want the silver plating, so we have all the possibilities. But how different, I always want lacquer because I don't like the green hand that mm -hmm. you get. How much difference does it make once you do lacquer? If I choose this horn and it's unlacquered and then you lacquer it and it's really different and I don't like it, what do we do then? Um, it doesn't usually happen. Important is that you lacquer directly. So after the decision of the instrument that you choose it and uh, don't wait too long. If you play this instrument, for example, for one year, and you come back and you decide to lacquer in cause of the black hands and uh, the green. smelling <laughs> green, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, then uh, we have the problem that the instrument gets polished again, yeah. making cleaning from the inside and all things you, you blow in. Uh, the spit, muesli, mm. uh, McDonald's. Mm, lovely, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum. <coughs> we take them out. And you get this instrument back, it's lacquered and it's very dry. So the feeling, if you get this back, is different. And mostly the people say, no, it has been lacquered, it feels different, and it's not a lacquer. And they want their money back. 
Okay. So I get this horn. We imagine that I'm on a horn exhibition and there's hundreds of other people trying out horns, playing their Strauss concertos and the high notes. Just literally blow into the horn and um, play a few of my favorite notes and, and see, see what we think. And mm, yes, play your, your problem notes. My problem your, notes. Your problem notes. How much time do notes? we have? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, find a silent room. That's okay. important. Don't play in the lower room. It's, it's quite difficult. I find it difficult in here because this is such a small room. Mm -hmm. It's a very honest room as well. There's, n there's no, no sort of echo. There's nothing to make the tone beautiful. So mm -hmm. that's an advantage. But it is quite small. Isn't it difficult for you to then listen? Uh, it's very small, but we have a special roof inside, uh, which has no um, hall sound. And it doesn't, uh, it shows the real sound of the instrument. For me, it's more easy to help with the selection because I can really hear the noise of the instrument and not the noise of the room. Okay. So usually you'd be a little bit further away, but because of this camera business, he has to stand really close. So it might be a little bit loud for you here, but I'm still going to watch your face to see whether you go, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay. That's I tried opening my hand up, but it's still a little bit stuffed. <laughs> okay. My immediate reaction is that it's a little bit too bright for me. Mm -hmm. um, this is what you played now. Yeah. Usually. This is uh, the first uh, um, things you make a warm up if you start playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how long was your warm up? Today, about 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we're using this to warm up. <laughs> it's okay. The other one was better. Yeah, no, the other one was better. Usually, um, what I have to say, the players, when they come in, it depends. Sometimes they have another brand, they have another model. And uh, for the warm-up, usually I ask them to use their own instrument. So that you the, can listen. They can listen to the warm-up and, yes. and, and listen how it is before. Yeah. And then we listen to the difference. And then we go to an instrument of the embouchure. It's really warm. Okay. And My embouchure is not really warm not right really now. Warm Never mind. Okay. But I, I just want to just try quickly the yeah. a few different ones. For me, that will be a little bit bright. I don't know if the That's camera microphones can pick that up. but. Uh, first feeling. Okay. But, uh, okay. And anyway, they're all different for me because I don't play with a with a ring. With a ring, yeah. I actually like it. This is closer to what That's I'm used to. to, to, to yeah. your sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah, much closer. It also feels it feels in it feels just the way I hold it. It feels a lot better mm -hmm. um, than that one. So it, it's it's really for me a, an immediate decision. So as soon as we turn the cameras off, I'm going to go and play a little bit longer on this one. Mm -hmm. What else have we got? For for me, also it's important to listen a while to the player to find his sound how he plays usually, Her. and then feel the difference and listen the difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So. I know what you mean. It's it's harder to make a nice sound in the mm, middle it's register. It's covered a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That's exactly my break, and that's mm. where it doesn't sound so mm. great, but that's mm. probably me and not the horn. some time now this is just was generally for um, just for a little bit of information mm -hmm. um, what we can do um, we're going to turn off the cameras and start trying them out in in depth and that will take a while won't it 
Yes, it takes uh, maybe one hour. If you about the same. If someone has five horns, they should take about an hour to yeah, choose them. Yeah. Not too long time. So if if you don't know after one hour what's going on with the instrument, you don't know after five hours as well. But one last question: changing different bells. How much difference does that make? That makes also a difference, but. Uh, don't do this at the beginning. Just choose an instrument like it is and then we can listen. You have a feeling, you have the first impression of the instrument and then we can take some other bells with a different tension, with a different weight, mm -hmm. with a different material and uh, we can improve a little bit and then you listen, uh, you hear directly if it changes yes. positive or not. Okay, Hans, thank you very much for your time and your great tips about how to choose a horn. Time's up, I'm afraid, but I'm going to stay here and carry on having fun trying out all these horns. Thanks, Hans. Thank you, Sarah, also for coming, and uh, yeah, let's continue testing horns. Let's. Okay, which one should we try now? Next. Next. <laughs> So, ich fand das nicht so gut, leider, aber... Mm -hmm.